Jeffrey Gunlock is a weird looking dude. I've said this on Twitter. I follow me on Twitter, by the way. I sit on Twitter. He just doesn't look like a billionaire to me or a hedge fund guy. Every time I see him, I imagine him like coming. Uh, he reminds me of uh, Ron Howard's brother. You know who I'm talking about? Ron Howard's brother. I, I pull up a picture of him. I don't know. But anyways, we're doing a reaction video. He was on CNBC. We're going to listen to him and see what things I may or may not agree with. I've not watched this video. But either way, let's watch this. Well, exclusive. He is with us for his first live TV interview following. Yeah, he looks better here. His decision on interest rates, raising them, of course, by a quarter point. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. Hey, Scott. Nice to be with you again. Yeah, we talked just before where you said probably go 25 and that would be it. You got your 25. You think that's it? I think the chances are better than 50-50 that we're done with the rate hikes. Wow. Um, we've, we're going to have to watch that, uh, how the short on the Treasury curve is moving, because it's been so schizophrenic in response to all of these strains in the banking system and the deposit runs. So uh, basically, the two-year Treasury has averaged about 4.4 for the past month. And so it's sort of in the context Yawn. of what it is now. Like, I just look at this and I immediately think to myself, why is he making these, uh, why are you making these projections? Like, it literally boggles my mind. Why does it matter? I mean, I get it. If he's part of a hedge fund, he's trying to bet on interest rates, things like that. But I, I don't get this. I literally don't understand. If you're a value investor, that's what we're trying to teach on this channel. What should matter is the long run. There's going to be cycles that happen. There's going to be ups and downs and cycles. Can you buy a company for a good price based on normalized cycles? And yes, things might get worse for a while, but that can be bad forever. And things might get better, but they're not going to be great forever. Let's continue on. But it suggests to me that the base case is the Fed's not going to be raising again. And I think this credit contraction a concern is going to be at the core of them pausing because obviously uh, we've seen financial institutions, lending institutions, tightening credit conditions for a year and they now. want that. And obviously over the past few weeks, the, the signs are they'll be t they've tightened further and might may tighten. Wait a second. That's that's the point of raising rates. They want to contract credit. The point of raising rates is if you contract credit, then less people are going to get money. If less people are getting money, less businesses are getting money, less is being spent, inflation stays tempered down. I don't think he's saying it as like, he's saying it like, oh, this contraction of credit is not a good thing. It's exactly what they want. They want to see people, less people buying stuff. And the comment is, we need to see less business expansion. Remember, Powell's in front of the Fed, in front of the um, House and the Senate, and they were criticizing him saying, you're gonna, the, your actions are going to cost 2 million jobs to be lost. And his comment was, it's way better than having 7 8% inflation for everyone in the country. Let's keep going. Even even uh, from here. I mean, the thing that Dominic Chu was talking about at the end of the last show is, is pretty real. I think that a lot of people fell asleep on their checking account balances, not really realizing that they were getting such low interest rates while the six month T-bill was giving you 5% and still you know four and a half or four and three quarters. And since it's all over the newspapers now and all over news programs, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see that deposits as a percent of GDP fall fa fairly significantly yeah. as people wake up to the fact that they are giving away uh, 400 basis points by staying in the banks. And so that's gonna be a, a liquidity concern also Regional banks uh, fuel a lot of small business lending, a large fraction mm -hmm. of it. And it's fairly clear that that's going to be contracting. So, uh, I and that's the goal. When you want the economy to slow down, you raise interest rates so banks are lending less and people are borrowing less. That's the goal. That's exactly what the Fed wants to happen. I don't, I literally, I'm surprised he's even saying this. Like it's a, like it's a, a reaction that they didn't expect. No, goal, let's raise rates. Why? It slows the economy. Why? Because less people borrow, less banks lend. That's the goal. Now, it's a difference between that versus banks get scared and they completely contract. That could be a repercussion of all this if too many banks fail, if there's some issues with commercial real estate. That's what happened in 07 and 08, that banks were just stupid. Typical banks got us into trouble, then when the smart people, the smart money, AKA me, were buying 9, 10, 11, they said, we're not going to lend because we think it's too risky. Oh, 
So all the idiots are out of the market. The smart guys are buying at half the price you guys were lending for before and you think it's too risky. Just the evidence that bankers are probably more dumb than the average person. Let's continue on with uh, this guy. I think all in all, uh, the economic headwinds are building. We've been talking about this for a while. And I think that the recession is, is here in a few, in a few months. Um, all we you really know, need is the maybe. rates to go higher. You, you seem to be suggesting, uh, I think, and please, you correct me if I'm wrong, um, that it's either or for the Fed. It's either you fight inflation or you, you're going to have a problem with financial stability. Whereas, let's say, Christine Lagarde, for example, ECB president, suggested that you could do both. One doesn't sacrifice the other. You can oh, have to see his reaction. In the toolbox to continue to fight inflation. And if there are credit financial stability issues, that you could fight those as well at the same time. Do you disagree with that? Strongly, I strongly disagree with that. Oh, we agree on that. You can't have it both ways. I, yeah, you I'm trying to figure out. Too. I'm trying to figure out how do you fight inflation with raising rates and there's a contraction in lending, then how do you spur lending again? That doesn't, I'm, I, I'm really trying to think about this. I really don't know because I'm trying to think, okay, so raise rates, less people are borrowing because their costs are higher. So the only way to increase borrowing is to lower rates. So how do you, yeah, I don't know if I understand that. And by the way, Christine Lagarde, she's, oh, it's not even on here, but on your video, she's ECB. I mean, she's going to say things that like, just like when I hear Powell say, well, we can have a soft landing. I think he's just saying that to get people to feel okay. Cause he can't come out and say, this is going to be a mess. I mean, he can't do that. Privately behind closed doors might be a pillow talk with his wife saying this is not going to be good. But the public, he would absolutely be killed if he came out and said this is not going to go well. Right? Go look at 2007 and 2008. Go look at the things that were said even before then by Greenspan and Bernie. All these, it's a, you have to sit there and understand like they are essentially politicians. Right. And there are some things they say that I look at going, okay, that seems pretty truthful. But there are other things they're going to say because they need to make sure people are calm. All right. So let's see what else he says. So we're hearing a lot about the financial system sound and all that. But, you know, in the United States, we've had such a different uh, movement in the bank sector over the past, I'm talking back 20 years, really, or at least at least to 2005, where the U.S. banks, if you look at uh, Bank of America, it went all the way back to its high or nearly to its high back in 2005, 2006, J.P. Morgan, way above the highs pre-financial global financial crisis. Uh, Wells Fargo, same thing. But you look at Credit Suisse, and they never recovered. Yeah, they never recovered uh, from the global financial crisis. They were still down like ninety percent the whole time for the past few years, and that's the same chart pattern that we see on Deutsche Bank, and it's the same chart pattern that we see on uh, Societe Generale. They're they're all down from their highs. Uh, Credit Suisse now basically a hundred percent, but Deutsche Bank ninety percent, SG eighty five percent. And now they're raising interest rates. So it seems to be that there's obvious financial fragility in Europe. And the United States is also trying to cause a recession. And we've seen what's happened. Well, of course they want a recession. Like I said, they want people to lose jobs that prices stay down. Guys, that is an absolute fact. Just like you got to look at politicians in general. They're going to say exactly what people want to hear. But look at their actions. I'm not saying Powell is a direct politician. He didn't run for office, et cetera, but he still critics. He still has that, that not ego, but he still has, he doesn't want to go home and feel like he's being just beaten up all the time. He doesn't want to be the guy who caused some major financial crisis. I mean, he wanted to raise rates a long time ago, but he got bullied into not doing it. The second inflation happened. I'm sure he was like, thank God I can now raise rates because inflation hurts everyday people significantly. Not just a little bit, significantly. When your eggs were up 600% over a few months, that hurts everyday people. And if you're making twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year, that hurts you big time when you have a family. And that's the thing. So, you know, go, he, he's, on, he's on CNBC. It helps his career. I just hate CNBC more than anything in the world. I just, like, literally when I get sick, I'll put it on when I'm at home, and I just, like, get more sick and depressed because I literally hear these people just going, these idiots have, and I'm not saying that I have these answers. What I'm saying, though, is they worry so much in the minutia and the small short-term stuff. It's like, uh, okay. Now, wouldn't be surprised to see deposits as a percentage of GDP fall? Well, yeah, 
that money is just being transferred to another location. Maybe 90 day treasuries, maybe six month treasuries, whatever it is. It's still people having their money. It's just like can be held by the banks. And that means banks will have to pay more money on deposits, which will contract their profitability. So guys, thanks very much for watching this video. If you like this, subscribe and share it with somebody.